What's up, everyone? I am Wink. And I am Kills. And this is Scream Cheese. Today, we are talking about the film Mind, Body, Spirit, directed by Alex Heens and Matthew Miranda, starring Sarah J. Bartholomew and Maddie Breedy. An aspiring yoga influencer embarks on a ritual practice left behind by her estranged grandmother. And before we get into the review, if you love horror as much as we do, we would invite you to subscribe to our channel. We could really use your support. What did you think of this movie, dude? So I love found footage films. This was a very competently made one. The performances were good, particularly the main actress. She was really good. And um, aesthetically, it was a really nice film to look at, but there just wasn't a whole lot there. So we weren't presented with anything new in the subgenre, and it wasn't particularly scary. I, I feel like it really came down to the script or whatever they had. It might've been an outline. I don't know what their process was for this film or any found footage film. I'm sure it's a lot more flexible, but the core concept and the outline, the ideas, it just was very simple. There wasn't a single moment in the film that really stood out to me. Um, there were some good moments, but nothing that's gonna like stick with you. And that's unfortunate because there was definitely potential here to be so much more. Look, I'm just an audience member. Um, I know making a film is a lot of work. I've made a number of bad ones myself, but yeah, but it really came down to an intriguing, but ultimately flat story. I didn't hate it. I just didn't love it. To a degree, I kind of agree with what you've been saying there. I really enjoyed it. I would also agree that it was really simple. I don't think it necessarily brought anything new to the genre as far as like found footage goes, but. I feel like with these types of movies, you're trying to come up with a compelling story. You're using found footage, usually because you're dealing with a low budget, and that is one way to navigate a low budget and still make an interesting film. And then you have to figure out a way to use that found footage as a vessel to come up with creative moments. You have to use your found footage creatively, even though it's functioning as a way to hide the fact that you generally are working with a lower budget. And so for me, I agree, the, the plot was a little bit thin. In the beginning, I was really afraid that the only kind of scare tactic that we were going to get was going to be seeing things kind of popping in the background in and out. And mm -hmm. I was I was pleasantly surprised as we went on further into the movie that there were, for lack of a better word, like bits, like horror bits. They, they came up with clever ways to use kind of what they created with this, you know, fitness influencer yoga kind of found fo footage vessel. So I was kind of impressed with those things. I liked that it got like a little bit violent at times. I thought we weren't gonna mm -hmm. get any of that. And so they used that sparingly. It was really good. I agree with you. The main girl I think was actually really phenomenal. I Especially agree. she has like a moment towards the end when she's breaking down, she's on the phone with her mother. Um, she's had lots of good moments throughout the film. And I think she's shown in that moment. She actually in, in like kind of a small movie has shown a lot of range. Oh yeah. I put in my notes that she was really authentic and really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Even her like insecurity of recording herself in the beginning, like you and I have both had to record ourselves as we've done YouTube Yeah, I totally related to that, dude. I was yeah. laughing. Some of the writing with the, the conflict early on with the mother, I felt like was like eh, a little superficial. I felt like they were trying really hard to motivate her to stay in whatever horrors that arrived. They had to really yeah. make, make it important for her. I don't know Know that they really achieved it that much but for like a found footage level of suspension of disbelief it was enough for me to be like yeah even though these horrific things are happening she'll delve deeper she wants to find herself and she wants a connection to her grandmother. I will say one note I made, that book, I feel like that actually pulled me out. They they didn't have to make like the tome from ancient Greece. They could have just had it been like an older book. I literally made the note, the book is a little much. I'll say the art department did a great job with that though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just was like really old, really kind of disgusting. For those kind of just like in the background things that you catch, those as scares, they did didn't really scare me, but I feel like the filmmakers didn't overplay those. Like we didn't get like a loud like hit or or anything. They just let them play. And so even though they didn't scare me, I didn't feel like they were, I don't know, like spoon feeding it to me. I will say for me, a couple of their like scare bits 
hits towards the end, I got the chills a couple of times. While it didn't necessarily scare me, I said that string, if it was gonna go down her throat, should not touch that freaking book. I was like, God, if this is, this is gonna go in your mouth, do not let it touch that gross ass book, dude. Yeah, and also, dude, like, I know they're on a budget, but that CGI string was bad. So that's, <laughs> I agree with you to a degree, but it also was so much better than like a bad movie would have handled mm -hmm. it. So yes, I agree with you. It was like obviously a CGI string. I will say also in the scene where there was essentially lots of, God, I don't want to give away any spoilers, lots of like people on screen, there was a point at which the masking got really messed up um, just for a couple of frames. But I, I think like my eye was like looking for it. I was looking to see like, oh, how are they going to do all this stuff? And the masking got a little janky, but I think it's all forgivable, especially because it is really a pretty tight production. Like it's small, mm. it looks nice, it looks pretty pristine on camera, and everything's done pretty well for being such mm -hmm. a small film. Oh, and then just a final note, I thought that their ad breaks were funny, and I thought that they felt legitimately like ad breaks you would get, you know, on YouTube or whatever. Like the commercial direction was really mm -hmm. good, I thought. Anyway, you agree with any of that? You disagree with me? Did I convince you to like the film more or less? Well, no, just to comment on what you said, um, when I first got the like loading thing, Thing, I actually thought it was in like uh, voodoo <laughs> and then when I saw the thing at the bottom because they don't just cut to like a commercial you have the little ad break in a few seconds and I was about ready to tell you like dude this movie <laughs> you just paid for that now has commercials <laughs> I paid for two copies of this movie and we have to watch ads but no no I agree with you dude it had a creepy atmosphere like the direction was great the acting was really good like that lead actress was good I believed her completely and there was moments with her and her friend where they have like this intense interaction this fight and I thought it was good I thought her friend did a perfect job of like playing that kind of character and I realized I'm like wait a minute this is like one of those shots where there's no cuts, you know, because yeah. of the found footage style. I'm like, that was really, really good. It felt like a, two people really fighting. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of like, um, you know, I went to, I went to school for acting. It, it reminded me of like the scene work when you're bouncing off of someone and mm -hmm. you could tell you're kind of like killing it. You know, in the moment, I'm really listening to this person. I felt like they were having a really good moment. It did feel kind of theatery to me there, but not to say that's a bad thing. I think when you are dealing with something that is just kind of one shot, it's only moving a little yeah. bit occasionally and it is long takes, the feeling a little theatrical, I think is kind of normal. I want to make it clear, like I thought the film was, like I said, very well done. It was honestly a lot better than what I was expecting because I hadn't heard anything about this. That's not where I'm knocking the film. I'm saying that on a story level, there was potential there and there wasn't, for my taste at least, any like big moments or any like twists or turns where you're like, you know, something that make the film really stay with you as far as um, you have to tell somebody to go watch this film. For me, it was just a very solid found footage film, but it wasn't extraordinary. But yeah, again, the lead actress, I mean, she was really good. I believed everything she was going through. And even there was a point we brought up earlier with the string where in my head, I thought if that had happened to me, I'm going straight to the hospital, right? But as it went on, the film did a good job of making you realize like she pretty much locked herself out from everybody and she wanted to figure out this situation on her own. Not just the situation in the house, but internally, who she is as a person, what she's going through. We know that she's in a very troubled place, but she's genuinely trying to get out of that and become like a happier, better person. And um, yeah, she was awesome. It was just, again, the story. It's nothing we haven't seen before. So even if it was done well, you kind of hope like if you're making a low budget film, the one thing you can try to bring is something a little unique, something a little different. Um, so I didn't feel like they really brought that. But again, it was a competently made found footage film. And if you like found footage films like I do, then it's definitely worth a watch. Yeah, dude. And I would say the distributor uh, Welcome Villain only has a, a few movies. I don't know much about them, but I know that they're listed as production company and distribution on the film Malum, which was really good. It's a remake of a movie I really enjoyed, uh, Last Shift. And then they just are distributor on just a handful of other films. And I think that if they are essentially distributing, kind of curating content like this, dude, 
there is something really cool about this in conjunction with that other film. It's already giving me signs that I want to see the other films that they're distributing. And it kind mm -hmm. of gives me hope that there's like this other distributor now that is going to be like the doorway into some of this kind of lower budget horror that isn't mm -hmm. like schlocky and cheap. It's like lower budget horror that is respectable, that's good, that that is offering something. I think they're onto something. I think that this movie was onto something. I would be excited to see what these filmmakers do next. I'll have to look and see what they've done previously. But for me, this movie will stick with me a little bit. I'm always very excited, dude, to find things that are good, but are truly hidden treasures, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think this kind of is that. For me, I agree with everything you're saying about plot and stuff, but digging up this one is always going to be part of the story for me. For me, this this movie is already kind of like a little special uh, gem that way. Okay, that's cool, man. So uh, what, what do you give this film out of 10? It's tricky because there's aspects of the film that I could easily give like a super high score to, but I have to base it on like the actual story and how it resonated with me. So, so I'm, I'm gonna have to give it a, a six. Dude, that's respectable. I actually thought maybe you were gonna go less than that. I did, I have a, a five written down, but you convinced me otherwise. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, you can always give it the five, I don't know. Yeah, but sometimes when you talk with someone about a movie, you realize like, you know what, I think I did you know. And I am going to give the movie a 6.2. But yeah, dude, I thought this was this was pretty solid. I'm like really, really uh, excited that I got to watch this one and I'm excited to see what they do next. All right, folks, well, let us know what you thought of Mind, Body, Spirit. Also, let us know if you have seen the other movies that are distributed by Welcome Villain. Are we missing out on some cool stuff? Also, let us know of any other horror movies you think we should check out. Also, make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time. Peace out, cheesers. Peace.